everybody, Stephen Key here, and once again, I have a very, very special guest, um, Amanda Hutton, is that pronounced Hutton, that? yes. Okay. And Amanda is a professional inventor. And is that right? Yes, okay. yes. Full time. Full time. And she's going to talk a little bit about what does it take to become a professional inventor? What do you have to do? Some of the lessons she's learned along the way. Because you've licensed how many products? Over 50. Wait a minute. 50? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but and that's going back to the early 90s. So that's in the toy industry and yes. <laughs> that's okay. But also, you know, what's really interesting, Amanda, you've licensed in two different industries, which I found fascinating. And you Well, they're both actually quite similar. Okay. They really are. Um, I mean, you look at the toy industry and the pet industry, and you'll see a lot of similarities. It, okay. it usually will start out in the toy industry and then kind of linger over to the pets versus, versus the other way around. Okay. But but you'll have you'll see new materials come out for a kid's toy, and then all of a sudden, you'll if it's durable enough, you'll see right. it, you know, for pets. Okay, all right. So let's start back for just a minute. How long have you been? Um, how long have you been inventing for? How many years? I mean, professionally started. Early nineties. Okay, and you started in the toy industry and. Yes. Did you, you started with, and you mentioned this to me at one time, that you actually worked with the toy broker or licensing agent. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, actually, Bob Fuhrer, I just saw his name come up again on an email I got. His company is called Next Toy, and he really helped me a lot. Yeah, he helps um, inventors like myself in the industry. So he got me started, and then I was able to, luckily, through my contacts, go on and do it on my own but he he definitely helped me a lot as, as well as a another fellow pet uh, industry person uh, Neil Wordy he also was in the toy industry at the time and kind of mentored me as well okay. so that helped a lot and they also suggested books to read by other inventors okay. um, yeah. licensing agents that had written books so I got a lot of good recommendations for that as well okay wonderful <laughs> Um, so to be a professional inventor, you do with this full time, which is pretty exciting. Okay. Yes. Um, what is your day like? Um, well, it's kind of varied now. I mean, it used to be where I concentrated pretty much, you know, just on designing and toys and all that. Um, unfortunately, I have an ailing mom, so I kind of balance that with it. But when you have your own business, you're not just working Monday through Friday, nine to five, you know, it's all the time. And especially these days with, you know, having a phone and emails right there, you're just, you're always working, it seems. So yeah, my days basically, I get up, I, I have a short commute, I have an in-home office, so I walk, get my coffee, tea, walk down the hall and get right on the computer. And I'm usually on the computer until midday and then, I might do some prototyping in the afternoon, or as I said, if I have to do some things for my mom, I'll do that. Okay. So yeah, so it's always pretty much in the morning I'm on the computer, but then my afternoons, I hope to prototype, but you know, I, I don't always get the chance to do that, but I'm always thinking and coming up with new products too, okay. so. Well, tell us a little bit about staying in one industry for a while. How important is that? I think it's very important. I mean, I was pretty much in the toy industry from about 92 until 05. Um, then at that point, I was primarily into the pet industry. I just, I liked, uh, I just like the people better. I like the whole environment better. I also don't have children. I have pets. So I thought, yeah, this is probably uh, a better, you know, industry for me. But I certainly learned a lot. I think if you stay focused in one area, you can just gain so much knowledge plus contacts, and and that always makes a huge difference. Yeah, Richard Levy um, said to me, yes. a pretty popular toy inventor said to me, it's it's really what you know and who you know. Exactly. Okay. Yes. And and the only way to really be good at that is stay in one industry long enough to understand their business. 
Exactly. And, yes. And, and build the relationships. Once you build the relationships, is it easy? Um, is that door pretty much open? Yes, it is. But you, but you still have to have a good product and it still has to be cost effective. Okay. So, but like ethical is I've got two products with them right now and they were the very first company that I met with. So obviously I've developed a really good relationship with them over the last 15, 16 years. So, and they were the first to license one of my products. So relationships are critical. Okay. Critical. Okay. Yes. Right, very good. Um, let's talk about when you're designing for a company for a minute. Okay like ethical and we'll talk about one of the products that's launching now because it's so exciting i'll get to that in a minute i, I okay. love it i love it i love it i love it um me too um do you how well do you study their product line their price point where they like to kind of play i mean is that something you really focus on so you really know where where they play so you can design for them um you know, for me, I, I come up with an idea and then because I have a number of clients, um, I will direct it to one or two particular clients because I know what, you know, more what they're looking for. I mean, it, it does change, you know, anytime you come up with a really amazing product, okay. Um, okay. anybody might like it. Can you fit it? in with what they're doing because a lot of times like with the push and pop many of my clients they want things that you can do an entire line of so i i knew when i first came up with that 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 might be more difficult because okay. it was okay. kind of just a one product okay. and uh but luckily um luckily ethical who normally do like to do lines okay. were willing okay. to take a chance because they love the product so much okay so let's talk about that product since you mentioned it and i love it so much okay. um, let's see it <laughs> let's see it okay here we have the push and pop a little hard to demonstrate right here but hopefully it'll work just do it the wheels so you can see a treat popped out now normally you'd have this going a, across the rug okay. <laughs> or floor but um but yeah it's great the the um the dog or cat because uh cats will do it too they actually they just came out with this version which uh is just smaller different color um uh, but they designed this one specifically to cats although my so wait, cat, a minute, wait a minute wait a minute let me see if i understand this this is a dis a fun dispensing food for your cat or dog. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So so and it's very simple. You um, I mean you can take the dome off. You could just twist it, and it'll come right off. Okay. And and then put the treats in. Personally, you know, I just put them through the top, but you can't fill it too high because okay. then it'll um, interrupt the mechanism. But they shouldn't eat too many treats anyway. <laughs> so there is a little line to fill them up, and they just push it along. Now a cat, you know, a cat doesn't push very hard. They kind of just swat. So it takes a cat a little longer, but they eventually realize if they do it with their head, they can activate it. Oh, so yeah. and my cat loves it. He he uses it all the time. Well, we're so gonna play. We're gonna play a video because the videos are so nice. about it you you came up with kind of a new category didn't you kind of a dispensing treat fun it's like fun for the animals uh, it is um i've always thought that you know and, and i'm doing with with treats as well like treats don't have to just be healthy they can be fun too okay. so i'm kind of applying that into a new category for me for myself but um, yeah, I just, I, I was literally, I was watching 
um, different videos online. I was researching treat dispensers because I was looking at doing a new fun treat dispenser. And I had popcorn going in my in my microwave. And, I, and as I was looking and researching these products and like, okay, yeah, that's too similar, too similar. You know, just trying to think of something really different. And I, as I was listening to the pop, I was, it just hit me. And a lot of times that's, you know, ideas, they just hit you. Yeah. And I knew exactly how to, you know, how to figure out how to, how to design this. And yeah. the only thing was cost. Cost was okay. an issue initially, but luckily Ethical was able to okay. work it out with the factory and we were able to produce it because the mold was expensive. Well, let's talk about this. I mean, this looks very complicated to make a prototype. Did you make a prototype that worked like that? How how did you present the idea to them? Um, well, I kind of went and took the old uh, corn popper <laughs> and cannibalized that, basically. So I made a few adjustments, and, and that's so it was, you know, rudimentary. It didn't look as nice and polished as this, okay. but, okay. you know, you... you I had videos of dogs, you know, playing with it and, and getting the treats. So, and, and that's a huge plus to have a video of your product, especially one like this okay. that, that has an action and is, is sometimes with plush, it's a little more, more difficult to do, to display that. But with this type of product, this was an easy sell with a video. <laughs> okay. Now let's talk about the video for a minute because that's a great format. Amanda, was that a 10 minute video? Um, no, it was probably, I try to do no more than two minutes okay. because, you know, attention spans, <laughs> you know, people, you know, the, after you get it, as long I edit mine down, obviously it's usually like 15 minutes and then I edit it down to the highlights with okay. a little music, you know, maybe a voiceover <laughs> and yeah, I try not to have more than two okay. minutes. Um, yeah. Did you do with this all yourself on an iPhone or a big expensive production that came no, into your? No, actually, luckily my fiance is my techie. Okay. So yeah, I, I sh I'll shoot the video and then I give it to him and he edits it down. And, and of course he'll ask me, do you like this? What do you want in it? But but he's really good. I kind of give him free reign with that. So, okay. but, so you... luckily I have him to help me with that. Did you name it yourself? Um, actually, I initially had Pop Treat is the name, and Ethical changed it to Push and Pop, which I like better because going back to my toy industry days, mm -hmm. everyone mm -hmm. always said a cute, catchy name is great, especially if it describes the product. Oh, and okay. Push and Pop certainly describes this product to a T. So okay. I love yeah. the name. All right. And you won three awards with this already? Yes, actually, I've got my global pet right here on my desk. So it won uh, best in show at Global Pet last uh, spring. Okay, congratulations! What a wonderful Thank product. Um, yes. But you do a lot of other stuff in the toy. Let's talk about um, what's one do I have here? In fact, I have one of these on my shelf. Okay. <laughs> really? Yes. Uh, <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, As as well as the gorilla. The gorilla's done really well on Chewy, especially. I've got the gorilla somewhere. I don't know where, but you know what? Explain this product because it really smells good. Yeah, it's infused with Arm & Hammer baking soda, hence the license, yes. And that's with uh, Fetch for Pets and actually with uh, a colleague, uh, Chuck Lamprey. Okay. We share this product together. So. Um, initially, uh, I came up with the design, but I brought him on um, because he's very good at doing uh, renderings, uh, 3D okay. Uh, okay. renderings on the computer. So we came aboard, changed it quite a bit, and initially we started out with another company, and then um, that didn't work out. So luckily, Fetch picked it up, okay. and they're coming out actually with a whole new new line it's new packaging um okay a diff okay. slightly different colors and then smaller versions of each of them so this is a dog chew right because i have my little yes. dog loves this my daughter's dog yes. loves this okay so yes. <laughs> this, this is wonderful yes. 
That's a rubber chew toy. It's supposed to be okay. for heavy chewers. <laughs> for heavy chewers. Okay. All right. Let's talk about another one here because I know you've got so many, but let's talk about um, what's the monkeys behind you? What is that called? Stre oh, these are, yeah, stretchies. So, yeah, monkeys are very popular um, always as a plush toy. This one, I actually, and, you know, again, when we're always talking about developing new product. Um, obviously, first, they've got to like the product. Second, it has to be cost effective. So I was a little worried if this would be, they'd be able to do it. But um, I was just looking through stuff one day and I had old luggage straps. And that gave me the idea for this. So these are actually luggage straps. You're <laughs> for the kidding. Things. Yeah. And, uh, and this is another ethical product, the same ones that are doing the push and pop. And this is, this is actually, this has been doing really well overseas too. All right. So, and it just actually got on Chewy, which is nice. But yeah, so they were able to find, you know, source the, uh, source the luggage straps and luckily cost effectively. Nice. But nice. yeah, and they do also, you know, these are the other two characters. They do also, um, holiday versions of these. Okay. So, and sometimes that can even be more profitable than the originals. <laughs> these are outselling the holidays, but in the past I've had many that the holiday versions outsell the originals. So you never know. <laughs> so, Amanda, we could do this forever. I have a million questions. Okay, but let me <laughs> let me ask a couple more real quickly. Um, um, the line extensions, that's really wonderful. Do you come up with the line extensions or do they? Um, sometimes both. Um, they, they'll just tell me, like with the stretchies, they said, oh, we're going to do holiday versions. Okay. Now, sometimes they might ask me about... Okay characters and providing characters or features or colors um in this case they didn't they seem to have it all you know figured out so okay. so they just came out with three christmas characters so once you start to work with these companies you build a relationship it's kind of being part of their team is that correct very much so yes okay so um let's talk about protection because everybody worries about that so much Yes. Yeah. I was very paranoid when I started out, you know, uh, just, oh my God. I mean, I wasn't with my mentors, obviously. They told me initially what to do. Um, but yeah, you're, you're always fearful of that. Even if you're protected, you know, people will still, you know, try to knock you off. So yeah, that's obviously key. So you want to do a provisional patent as soon as you're finished with the product and uh, and then you're set for a year. Okay. Um, okay. Because a lot of times you'll make changes to a product. So, and then there's some like, I'm not gonna do a patent obviously on a, on a plush toy, okay. you know, okay. maybe a design patent down the road if it's doing really well. But, um, but obviously, you know, like the push and pop and uh, these, these guys, you know, I, I might do, you know, a copyright as well. On the on the designs, um, which you also want to do before the product hits the market too. That's key. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about. Um, we talked about protection, which is great. Thank you. About the prototype, you talked a little bit about cost. You said how important is it for it to hit that price point? Yeah. Why is that so important? <laughs> well, we are all in this to make a profit. And the retailers are wanting more and more of that. So they're pressuring constantly, you know, my, my clients to, you know, give them more of a profit margin, which takes away from theirs. So, and makes it harder on us because then they want to take, you know, more of our royalty. Well, could you do it for three instead of five? And it's like, no. <laughs> so, uh, so it, it, it is, it's very, it's always very difficult. Like the push and pop almost didn't get out there because of the molding costs. Luckily, they worked out a special deal with their factory and were able to do it. Okay. But okay. yeah, cost is the most important, really, after, okay. of course, they have to like the product, but okay. after that, cost is the most important thing. Okay, let's talk about, is there such thing as a standard royalty rate? And what is it? Um. Yeah, it's pretty, I mean, they try to move it, but 5%. 
which it was 5% in the toy industry. And some companies were really inventor friendly and you might get a little bit more than that, but that's rare. 5% is pretty standard, but they're also trying to move it down to three these days. But luckily, because I have relationships with so many different companies now, they they pretty much know 5% is it. You know, we've got to make money too. <laughs> okay. So um, let's talk about one last question. Um, they know you're a professional. They know you're full time. They know you can come up with great ideas. And so they also probably know you're shopping your products around a little bit too. Yes. No, I'm very I, I very open with, with my clients. They know. Obviously, if they don't like something, I'm going to take it somewhere else. So, yeah. Do they ever, what about an option? I know they do that in the toy industry. Do they do that in the pet industry? No, not really. <laughs> I wish they did because, okay. uh, quite frankly, I... That's how I made most of my money it was in the toy industry was options. But um, no, not not in the pet so industry. Explain an option for the audience for just a minute, if you could. Well, so basically an option is um, they like your product and they don't want anybody else to have it, but they're not sure if they can fit it at the time. So they will pay you a certain amount of money to option it for six months, a year, okay. and yeah. you know, and obviously you can't go anywhere else with it. They have the rights to it for that time. And then they choose to either extend the option okay. or license it. All right, so they're really doing their homework. Is there a set amount? Is it, you know, is it $2,000 a month? Is it less than that, more than that? No. it. it yeah, no, it was more than that in the toy in the toy industry. Yeah, but it could be anywhere. I mean, some people are lucky; they can get tens of thousands. So okay. um, yeah. it depends on the. Obviously, with a Mattel or Hasbro, you're going to get, you know, a way larger option. Um, mm -hmm. With smaller companies, you know, yeah, it would probably if you were lucky to get five, that would be okay. that would be good. Yeah. But, Do you know what the terms are going to be on um, the royalty rates and other stuff before you sign an option? Oh, no, I never did. I mean, okay. because they pretty much just said, you know, the, we're interested in this product. We don't want anybody else to have it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you really work that out later. Unless, of course, you have a current relationship with the company. Okay. Then, you know, you pretty much just use your standard contract that you've used on previous products. Okay. All right. Yes. You've got another toy plush that's really fun. What What is it? What is it called? <laughs> Um, actually, have to, they change, they just changed the name Cuddle Buddy. Well, it's part of Cuddle Buddies, but they're actually called Bangle Buddies. All right, let me see it. Hold one up so everybody can see it. So the whole thing is a squeaker. So you got the fox, a piggy, an elephant. Uh, you know, this is a good question. I'm not sure what this one is. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be a doggy. <laughs> no, this is the doggy. I'm not, you know, that's a good question. Because well, they changed some of my characters. Uh, dogs, my little dog, my daughter's dog, Bear, and we did a video when Chuck, your partner, came on and and I tested his products with with Bear. Oh, Chuck did do one with you. It was a while ago, but what was really fun, um, this little dog loves the sound. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, and he knows when he was small, he couldn't make the sound. And, you know, he couldn't bite hard enough. But now that he can, he just loves the sound. So another <laughs> another plush I love, winner. I love the, I think these are, are great. These are actually on Amazon now, but they should be in Pet Supplies Plus very soon. I sent all the links to your daughter. Hopefully I didn't overwhelm her. <laughs> um, we'll put the links down below in the YouTube video. But thank you. Wow. Amazing. Amanda. <laughs> cannot thank you enough. You're the real deal. You're a pro. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. Thanks. It's you a, know, it's, it's a, lot, thank, a lot of hard work. <laughs> no, thank you for sharing this information and being so giving. I appreciate it very much. You're very welcome. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, if you like it, give us a like button. Subscribe down below. This has been Yay. fantastic. If you want to be a professional inventor, it's going to take time. You need to understand the industry. Uh, build great prototypes, build those relationships, be reasonable, be nice, be all those things, right? Yes? Yes. Yep, exactly. Right. Yes.
All right, Amanda, thank and you very much. Persistence. Uh, Don't stop. Keep trying. Because right. you never know. You thank never know. All right. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you.